الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبتي في الله the question was asked what is the ruling on someone of the sunnah sitting with Ahl al-Bid'ah uh, can they teach or give lectures in their masajid and if so what are the conditions of them doing so are they allowed to share the same platform as them please can you tell me what the Salaf and the scholars have said on this issue and what books I can read into this Barakallah Fiqh. Wafiqam Barakallah. First and foremost, this is a piece of research that you've asked about. It's not really a black and white issue. And we're going to just give it, just touch on some points uh, and, and try to highlight some things. So first we have to know that the Asl, and this is why you find uh, these books like uh, Asul Al-Tiqad, uh, Asul Al-Sunnah, Imam Ahmed, uh, you know, all these uh, various usul sunnah, shara sunnah, Imam Babahari, and many books that talk about uh, that were books that were compiled or written uh, by the Salaf and the later generations. That you find that a common asl from the usul of Ahl Sunnah is no, you don't sit with Ahl Bidah. That's very clear. That means that is the foundation principle. That is the origin. The origin is no, you do not sit with Ahl Bidah. That's clear. Uh, and I think this has been detailed extensively. Uh, so one thing I would advise is go to the many, many lectures that have been translated. Uh, this question has been put to the ulama countless, countless times in the contemporary uh, settings, con you know, meaning from contemporary ulama, everyone from Ben Baz to Imam al Albani to Imam Muqbil, Ben Hadi al Wadi to Imam Ben Uthaymin extensively some beautiful works that are not translated into English unfortunately some of them are some of them aren't uh, Sheikh Rabi Ben Hadi al Madkhali uh, and, and Kathir uh, of the Ulama Sunnah in this contemporary time Imam Fozan uh, and what I would say is you will find some uh, some differences with some of the scholars positions and so let's look into this uh, a little bit. So as we said that the asl is, no, do not sit with Ahl al-Bidah. Imam al-Shatabi, uh, rahmatullahi rahmatin wasi'a, he talked about, because often we talk about bid'ah, and we talk about uh, hawa, you know, the, the desires, following the desires. And the desires here is meaning following your desires with regards to the religion, uh, meaning and, and, and let's, let's look at what uh, Imam Shatabi said. So Imam Shatabi, he said, Samal Hawa, Hawa, لِأَنَّهُ يَحْوِي بِسَاحِبَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ So Imam Shatabi, he said that the reason it's called Hawa, or desires, is because it, the one who uh, is afflicted with you, afflicted with it, uh, that it, uh, it takes this person it inclines this person to the hellfire. This is the hawa that we're talking about. We're talking about the desires. We're not talking about, you know, as Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that uh, the sins or what have you can be divided into two or the, you know, shahwat and shubahat. Shahwat meaning uh, your desires, like sexual desires, things like this, you know, that so the, the shaitan can come to you through your loins, through looking at the haram, tasting the haram, touching the haram, doing the haram, like zina and things like this, fornication, uh, masturbation, things like this. Right? And then the other way is through uh, shubahat, doubtful things. And this is the, what we're talking about, the hawa here, in general, is being discussed. When we talk about ahl bid'ah, well ahwa, we're, we're more inclined to talk about the bid'ah, meaning religious innovations, whether that be in uh, aqidah or that be in jurisprudence, in mu'amalat. Uh, a beautiful statement just to give us that foundation of the Salaf on how they uh, uh, viewed Hawa because these are extensive whole books, tons of narrations hundreds, thousands uh, of, about this in those books that we mentioned uh, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma said ma dhakar Allah ma dhakar Allah jal al Hawa fi kitabihi illa dhimmi or dhimmuhu. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala he said that Allah did not mention in his book 
the the concept of hoa, this desires, except that he mentioned it as something sinful. Okay, so we know, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Kulu bidatin dalala, all bidah is innovate, all um, religious innovation is misguidance. Wukulu bidatin dalala, wukulu dalala tafinna, and all misguidance leads to the hellfire. We know this. Um, so we know the, the concept of the uh, that bid'ah is mithmuma. That bid'ah is it's sinful. When we're talking about religious innovation, we're not talking about microphones, we're not talking about this camera, we're not talking about the computer and things like this, but we're talking about religious aberrations, changing things in the religion, either adding or subtracting, so to speak, you know, not doing, you know, and, and changing the, the way or the time for uh, religious acts of ibadah. So, Ibn Abbas, uh, his statement shows us that, Hawa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Hawa as something sinful, as something negative. But what about Ahl Bid'ah? So the Salaf, there are countless narrations where the Salaf of Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, yuhadhir min Ahl Bid'ah and Ahl al-Ahwa, the people of desires and innovation. So from those narrations comes the narration of Abu Qulaba or Qilaba that he said Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasi and, and we're just going to mention this one narration because there's so many countless but this will show you the principle the principle because it's an established asl established foundation principle of the Salaf uh, of the Salaf of this Ummah and Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah so he said La tajalasu ahlul ahwa wa la tujadiluhum fa inni la amin and yagmasu yagmasukum fi dalalatihim yalabbasu alaykum ma ta'rifun so he says do not sit with the people of desires so that kind of gives you that answer in general that this is the asl this is the foundation principle and do not debate with them don't argue with them because i cannot guarantee for you that they will not overcome you with with uh, misguidance they will not misguide you you know or they will deceive you about those things you already know so meaning if you already have the sound aqidah you already believe in uh, tawheed as it came from the book in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you believe in the pillars of iman as came in the hadith of Jibreel and in fi uh, kitab sunnah and you already have a sound aqidah but by sitting with a person of desires, that may make you doubt that Aqidah. Okay, and there's so much mufasid, so many harmful things with regards to uh, sitting with the people of desires because they can either change your view if you're not strong, or they can place seeds of doubt, or they can even cause you to leave Islam. This is what happens. Right? I know countless personal examples of people who went from bid'ah to bid'ah from being Salafi to being extreme takfiri to even becoming an agent for various intelligence agencies and leaving Islam. In fact, I know a couple people like this. Wallahum ista'an. So, it shows us that, you know, this desires the ahwa, the dangers of it. So we know that. We don't need to go too much in depth. And there's countless narrations. So, Another thing I want to mention with regards to this, for example, a lot of people, there's a lot of popular people out there, and I can think of one, and I just listened to a, a clip of it, a little piece of his clip, because it came up on one of my feeds, and I saw, you know, I, I've never spoken about him, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he's extremely popular, and basically he's saying that it doesn't matter if you call yourself, sell, or, you know, that he doesn't recommend and doesn't like calling yourself Salafi or Sufi, because all the sects have something good. This is a qa'ida. This is a foundation principle based on bid'ah. This is ahwa. So therefore, this newly invented matter that this person has come, that yukhalif kitab, yukhalif a sunnah, yukhalif a minhaj as salaf, it goes against all those, the, the masdar of the religion, Quran was sunnah, with the understanding of the salaf of this ummah, they know, you know this, it's a bid'ah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him. So we've established that, that foundation principle. Can they teach 
Meaning, so when you're talking about teach or give lectures in their masajid. So now you're talking about the du'at. So you're talking about, I believe, du'at to sunnah. And what are the conditions for doing so? Again, these are extensive, detailed masa'in issues. And we're going to just try to give some, give some information about it, but we can't give it its haq in 5 to 10, 15 minutes. So, before I left Medina, about 10 years ago now, or however many years ago it was, <coughs> I asked about seven or so mashayikh about this issue. Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab al Aqil. I tried to ask Sheikh Obey, but I recall he was sick at that time, so I couldn't really get a sick because I wanted to get a, a different view because I knew Sheikh Obey's view, and I know Sheikh Rabi's view, and I know some of the some of the ulama of Sunnah that they have a view, they cut the door, they close the door. They say no, totally. Okay, this is their general mokif that they, they go and they use as a dilla the book and the sunnah and the uh, the asl of the men had to the salaf. Right. Another group, the other scholars, I asked Sheikh Abdullah Bilan as well, Sheikh Saeed bin Halal, these are some Mashaykh in Hail, I asked Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali, and Sheikh Ibrahim, I'll just mention uh, what he said, which is most fitting because it's with the evidence. Okay, and all of their views were basically similar. They all gave beautiful, different details, but it comes down, let's look at this Nas, the text. Sheikh Ibrahim gave a text, he said, you know, because I said, Sheikh, you know, there's different views we hear from our Mashiach. And he said, that is not the important thing. He said that the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam said, Lian Yahdi Allahu bika rajalin wahidin, khayran lukam in humr al That if one person is guided by your hand, then it's better for you the, for the red camels. So he was making a stilala of that hadith. Using that hadith as evidence to show that, of course, with conditions that you have the knowledge, not just anybody, you're not going to get up and talk if you haven't studied and you're going to be affected by them. So one of the conditions would be that you have ilm, just like any da'wah. You need knowledge. You need knowledge of what you're calling to, meaning kitab wa sunnah. You need to, as some of the ulama say, and, and Sheikh Suleiman Rahali mentioned that you shouldn't be compromising your da'wah. Many, so many of the mashayikh, they say, that you shouldn't, they shouldn't put conditions. So, for example, if a Dio Bundy's allowed me to speak <coughs> at their masjid, to give a little lecture, to give a little, to read something, as long as they don't say, hey, don't talk about Tawheed, don't talk about this, don't talk about this, and especially these are things that are fundamentals of the religion, then if they gave conditions that are unreasonable conditions, no. Then, because they, they're making it, uh, uh, you know, uh, Belittling the principles of Ahl Sunnah. Okay? And the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. Right. So, those, in a, in a nutshell, as far as conditions, <clears throat> that they're not making you compromise, and so forth. And that you have a chance to make ta theater. And as the Prophet said, and that's why we go to back to that Nas, that Nas is Qawwi Jiddan. That if one person is guided by your hand, and Ahl Bid'ah gave you a platform, but not hugging and kissing. And Sheikh Suleiman Rahali, he also mentioned, and this is what the more or less the argument, uh, but why they take a strong position, for example, Sheikh Obaid and some others, maybe Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari and some others, that they close the door totally because they say you're making their numbers larger. So for example, if your name is on the flyer with a Mubtedia who's clear, you know, um, then you are making their numbers more. You know, the people, and then the people also say, oh, well, Sheikh so-and-so or Talib al-Ilm so-and-so is with him, he must be okay. So those are some issues that they raise as objections, okay, which are valid. But I think, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, going back to what some of those other ulama say and what the adilla shows us that, you know, looking at the harms and the benefits. So that's another point is you need to look at the harms in the benefits of doing so. And that's what it comes down to. And that's basically what Sheikh Suleiman al was saying and Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al aqil and others that looking at the harms and the benefits. If there's going to be a greater harm by you doing that the Ahl al is going to say, look, we have this student of knowledge. See, it's okay to be Naqshbandi, Diobandi, Sufi, whatever. 
if that's going to be the end result and you're not really giving dawah to the people and it's just about numbers and this and this and this, then there would be a greater harm in that to the dawah. Okay? That's just an example. Like, are they allowed to share the same platform? I think that that's uh, contained in there. Uh, another side issue I want to mention is there's three points I want to mention because this is one of the issues that we have with this is number one, determining who is Ahl Bid'ah because sometimes, often, not sometimes, often what we find in the West and I'm sure these same problems are in Somalia and in Ethiopia and I know they are for a fact because I know enough Tulab al-Ilm and Mashayikh that I know in those countries that and from those countries who have talked, I've talked in, you know, in detail about the situation of the Dow in the countries, and I'm very familiar with Ethiopia more or less on the ground. I've been on the ground, and others, and I've been to Indonesia, and I've seen also the same issues. Okay, so it's not just in the West, but I'll just put it in the context of what we experience, kind of in America and, and Europe in general. But one of the issues is determining who is the Bida. So a lot of times you'll find you've had some of the brothers who might be more excessive in in uh, their tibdiyah, okay? That they are excessive. Excessive doesn't mean they're doing a better job, doesn't mean they're adhering to the sunnah more, but they're excessive because they're making mistakes about people from Ahl sunnah and they're speaking about it and they're belittling ulama like it's nothing. Wa'iyadun billah, wa'iyakum min dalal. So then determining who is a mubtadi as a whole other issue. So that's something to be aware with because a lot of times people say, oh, I remember a, a particular individual said about a, a conference in Luton and said, oh, nobody's going to be there that's Salafi except Suhaimi. And they couldn't even say the Sheikh's name. They didn't even know who Suhaimi is. Sheikh Saleh, Imam Saleh Suhaimi, a major scholar of Ahlul Sunnah, teaching in the Haram how many <coughs> decades? Not because they just gave him Sadaqah and said teaching there, not because he doesn't have Elm. And who al mufiq had a sabab. It's because he is he's an alam, that's why. But so they said Suhaini is the only one because they were listening to other people. And you see how the chitter chatter, these are people who don't even know Arabic. And then you come on. So determining who is from Ahlabid, that's a whole nother issue. Because people raise these controversy about people who are maybe from Ahl Sunnah. But a, a second far that I want to say with regards to this mas'ala is the extent of bid'ah. Hmm. So that's another thing to consider. Are we talking about someone who has a, a, some, some light innovation? We're in kullu bid'at and dalal. It's all dalal. But la shak, it's not all on the same level. We don't classify bid'ah mukaffara with bid'ah ghayru mukaffara to, together. We don't classify bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam and bid'ah that doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. They're not the same. Likewise, bid'ah <coughs> Uh, so, so the people of Ahl Sunnah they tafaw it, and the people of Ahl Bid'ah they tafaw it. Meaning they have different levels. You know, someone who's just a beginning student of knowledge, not like someone who's a who's a grounded student of knowledge, who's not like a major student of knowledge, who's not like a sheikh, who's not like an alim. You know, they have different levels, and it's not like the general Muslim who's from Ahl Sunnah. So they all that's those are all people from Ahl Sunnah. Likewise, Ahl Bid'ah nafs the Ahl Bid'ah the same. That some are you know just general folk. From their society, that's you know everybody's ashadi there. That's what they learned in school, and they you know practice Islam to the best of their ability. They practice Islam, but they have some issues in aqidah because that's what their environment. Then likewise, there's students of knowledge amongst them who have different levels. Okay, so you have to look at also the, that's another issue to be uh, cognizant of. Thay. A third point I wanted to mention, and, and I think we talked about this, uh, and Sheikh Rabi even, you know, who's known for taking a very strong position uh, about many uh, individuals and to make it clear, we don't agree with everything from anyone, plain and simple. The Sheikh is like everyone else in that he makes mistakes and he gets things correct. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. He's still one of our Mashaykh Ahl Sunnah. We still have love for the Shaykh. But it doesn't mean you agree. I don't agree with any of my Mashaykh. Mia be me in every single hukum. Every single mas'ala that if I have the ability to even look at that mas'ala. You know, if it's not way over my head. So the point being, as the Prophet said, Kulu ibn Adam khata'u khayra khata'ina tawabun. 
All the children of Adam commit sins, and the best of those sinners are those who repent. So we have to know, you know, especially in these issues. Another last point, so I, I just came to mind, is we have to know that when we're talking about making tibdir <coughs> of someone, nazal al-hukm ala ma'ayyaneen, that you're now implementing some principles, uh, a ruling on a specific individual that this is an itch, issue of ijtihad. It's not nasi, nasi, nasi. You know, it's not from a divine text. You can't say, well, Sheikh so and so made tibdi of him in Tehena. Yeah, if you want to make taklid of the Sheikh, I'm not knocking you on that. But don't go and spread and act crazy and then belittle the one he's, he's making tibdi of, especially if that player, person's a person from Ahl Sunnah. We're not talking about somebody who's usul from Ahl Bidah. We're talking about people whose usul is Ahl Sunnah. And this is where we've had folda and chaos in the past 10, 15 years of just so many divisions between Ahl Sunnah. And this is why some books that talk about medicine for that, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Mam's book, uh, Ibana. These are all Arabic books, but some of them translated into English. Sheikh uh, Imam um, Abdul Masjid Al Abad's Rifkin, uh, Rifkin. Ahl Sunnah be Ahl Sunnah, you know, Ahl Sunnah gentleness with Ahl Sunnah. That's translated in English. Also, uh, and that doesn't mean we agree with every single individual or person he might praise or think from Ahl Sunnah, but he's given you kawaid and asul that you need to know that so many people, so many people ignored, and they throw out the baby with the the the, the bonnet, so to speak. They say, no, we don't like, because he prays so-and-so in there, and he prays so-and-so, throw out the book. It's a book, it, it helps the Hizbis. This is what some of the ulama said about it. And we don't agree with that. It's a fantastic book. And it's a book that if the people were practicing, it would call, Ahl Sunnah would be so much stronger. Instead of people hating them, and them hating themselves. Right. Also, I, I mentioned Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili's book, or I didn't, uh, An Nasiha. It's fantastic. Talks about Hajir and talks about these things as well. Good book. And that's in English as well, translated. Um, so a last point, and I was, I was mentioning Sheikh Rabi, that he mentioned, I, I recall, in some of his books he talked about, and I mean, way before him, many of the ulama spoke about this, but I'm just, because he comes to mind, because he was, I, I've read it several times in certain books of his, or uh, treatises and so forth, uh, talking about the dealing with Ahl Bidah, that are obviously it differs with regards to place and time and the strength of Ahl Sunnah and the strength of Ahl Bidah. So if Ahl Bidah is weak, then Ahl Sunnah has the upper hand, then they can, you know, make uh, some of these, it's easier for them to implement Hajar on them and so on and so forth. But if Ahl Bidah, most, most of the place, if you were the, in the minority, a tiny minority, you don't want to make Hajar of everyone. There's no Maslah. There's no benefit in that, and only it harms the Tao until it even destroys the Tao. Maybe you can't even give a lecture because you're busy talking about everyone there. But instead, you have to weigh the harms and benefits. And that doesn't mean compromising the religion, but that's called fiqh fiddin. And the Prophet said, May yira the law will be khayr and fiqh fiddin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh for the religion. So they differ. And the last point I want to mention that a lot of people don't know, which is, and, and I've taught it on this YouTube channel so you can find it, that it even kind of amazes me when I reflect because we know all the treaties and all the statements Sheikh Rabi because he he's in this time so much controversy around him and about his uh, saluk or his way of making tibdir so much controversy right <clears throat> but what's interesting is he himself so many years ago when he went to Sudan was he going only to the places of the Sunnah? no he gave da'wah to Ahl Bidah, Sufi Masajid, with hikmah. And that is what da'wah to Ahl Sunnah is. So my point is, Ahabat Tafillah, is that these are intricate matters, mabni ala masali wa mafasid, that they're built upon uh, looking at the harms and the benefits. And I wish we could do more justice to these topics. These are intricate, deep topics. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Eliza with Jill. Anything I said that was incorrect was surely from myself and the Shaitan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana Nabiya Muhammad.